Hey, what's up everybody? Joey Perez here talking to you about what went down last night on WrestleMania. It was actually a pretty epic event. Um, there was a lot of things that happened that I was down with. You know, um, I was really surprised by a lot of the performances. But then there was also some things that I just did not vibe with. You know what I mean? Like there was some like non-planned um, storytelling, right? And some people who are getting pushed who shouldn't be pushed and vice versa. Of course, we don't know all the behind the scenes uh, politics of everything. We can only hope. And just like you, I'm a fanboy with my own opinions, but hopefully you can resonate with some of them. And let's get right into WrestleMania. So first things first, the first match of the card was the one and only Rhea freaking Ripley. Like Rhea Ripley is the bomb. Like she is a work horse she can do everything she's great on the mic she's good on a lot of different avenues um but most of all she's a beast like she is just straight up a force to be reckoned with and that's her biggest attribute now as far as the match goes i really didn't mind the fact that she was fighting becky lynch it was just the version of becky lynch that she was fighting she was fighting this whole new i'm bigger than everybody vibe right like super mega star and people are starting to not resonate with becky lynch and it's not because rhea ripley is actually better per se but it's because she's not the becky lynch who helped the team win survivor series she's not the becky lynch who was quiet and modest but just got work done she's not the same becky lynch now she's very much like seth rollins where she's a showboat she dresses crazy she's trying to you know be materialistic rather than you know be the representative representative of women who get shit done right just part of my friends like get things done right so that's the problem that i have with becky lynch's character right now but as far as performance i mean she's one of the best workers out there this was a great match it went back and forth they sold it very well and at the end of the day, Rhea Ripley ended up winning the match and retaining the title. So not a bad match whatsoever. It was really great for WrestleMania. I just really hope WWE gives Becky Lynch a better story rather than just being the face of WWE. Like let her represent something rather than the man, the man, the man. I mean, that's so dumb. It's like okay we know she's the man but you don't need to tell everybody she's the man you know what she was before she was the man she was the irish lass and that lass kicked ass now it's like okay the man's fighting right how many times is she gonna say the man you know let's move on from that and let's push her back up and let's keep keep her vibing right let's keep pride but as far as rhea ripley goes i think it's time to cut ties with uh, the judgment day and do her own thing and this whole dom mommy thing it's got to come to a stop and they both got to go their separate way so they can grow as individuals and create new storylines right so um kudos to Rhea, kudos for becky that was a great match uh Rhea ripley stays on top mommy always stays on top next we had these boys right here you had this australian with a theory austin theory and um Grayson Waller, which I'm not too fond of either of them, but I guess, you know, they're in they're in a a building stage to where they're gonna start gaining fans. These guys really need um some good story to get them where they need to be as far as superstars right now. They're doing a great job as a tag team and they won the titles last night, which was pretty awesome, right? So I felt like that I felt that they deserve to win the titles being that they they are big names and their athletic ability is really great. And um, they, I mean, I was kind of hoping DIY might have won, but those guys need something. I'm not sure what it is. And then the second set of titles was won by Awesome Truth, baby. Awesome Truth is pretty dope. I'm glad for both of these guys. Mostly A Truth, I think. Everybody always looks at him as a clown, and he is. He's hilarious, right? He's great. Um, I mean, I love the part where he was uh, telling Johnny Gargano to super kick him because he thought he was Shawn Michaels, right? He still thinks he is, which is it's hilarious, right? Like, it's great to bring comedy, but both of these men are workhorses, and they have great athletic ability, and I believe at some point, um, R-Truth needs a serious role. 
um, before he gets too old on us and he can't do anything like that. He's uh, he's awesome and he deserves that. As far as the Miz goes, I'm glad he's with another title and he gets to do it with somebody who he can have fun with, right? So let's go Miz, let's go awesome, truth, let's kill it. Let's hold on to these titles for a while. The next match that we had was um, Santos Escobar and Dominic versus his dad and the now returned Andrade. And this was a decent fight. I mean, it was luchador gold. The only issue that I had with this fight was um, I'm getting kind of tired of the, the whole nobody lets Dom talk, right? I mean, come on, WWE fans. Let's not be sheeple, dude. Let's let this kid grow. Right. Let's let him become a better superstar. Let's let him fight his dad. And I really think the only way he's going to get to speak is when his dad tells everybody to be quiet. Right. That'll probably be the only time that he'll get over unless he keeps doing behind the scenes stuff. Right. Um, what I'm hoping, though, is eventually Rey Mysterio and Dominic get back together. But as far as this fight goes, um, not one of my favorite endings. I did not like that. Um, the Philadelphia Eagle football players won the match for him, which I get it. We're in Philadelphia. Let's get the city involved, which is cool. But it could have been a little bit more. It could have been a little bit more intense. At the end of the day, though, we got Ray and Andrade beating Santos and Dom again. So hopefully this feud can come to an end or get pushed into a little bit more drama um, where there's some some really good fights going on forward. But that's that fight, right? Next, we had the brothers, the twins. We had Jay Uso versus Jimmy Uso. Um, you know, like, I wasn't too excited for this fight, but when they started doing all the history of all the brothers fighting, because I was a big fan of the Rowan, Owen Hart, Bret Hart uh, feud when I was growing up, this was pretty cool. And, I mean, Jay is definitely becoming a star himself. Um, I'm just worried that Jimmy's going to get, you know, overshadowed. I'm not really worried about it, but it kind of stinks. You know, he's your twin brother, right? Um, it was a really good fight. I liked it. It wasn't bad at all. Um, yeah, so Jimmy and Jey Uso, they fought, you know, and it felt, it felt good because they're so good with each other that, you know, everything looked amazing. Like they put on a show for sure. Like these, these two guys, uh, a lot of people say they're boring and that they don't bring a lot, but their technician in the ring is really great. I mean, they are definitely one of the best tag teams of all time. I'm hoping at some point they get back together, together and work on the tag team titles. Cause I really don't view either one of them as main event, right? Like, yeah, cool. His name's main event J Uso, but not my cup of tea, you know, like he's cool and I like him, but let's get him like intercontinental championships, you know, first. Cool. What's let's move on to the next one, right? So we had Jey Uso versus Jimmy. Um, this was another match that I was uh, somewhat disappointed in. This was the, the Jade Cargill match, right? We've been waiting over a year for this uh, awesome athlete to come from AEW to the WWE to make a name for herself. And they fought a really good click and everything like that. And, you know, like really what I'm, I'm more surprised with is the push on Dakota Kai. She's the one who definitely deserves a push out of all of uh, all of the damage control group she definitely needs to get on the ball and get things moving or else she's going to be another Sonya Deville or another um what's that other lady who went to AEW oh I'll think of her name in a second but anyway they need to do something with her quick and they started to they're giving her you know an upgrade they're making her look better uh Ruby Soho that's her name anyways she'll turn into one of those if they don't do anything with her so um I'm glad she's getting more involved and she took over like semi leadership or the English speaking part of the team and uh, Bailey stepped out. Right. So that's going to give her time to shine. So long as those girls stay together. Now where my discrepancy is, is Jade Cargill comes and they put her with Bianca Belair. They put her with Naomi. Right. And of course those are three phenomenal athletes. There's no way damage control can, can beat these girls. I mean, Jade Cargill is, humongously and tremendously strong as is Bianca Belair right and then to top that off you got Naomi right who can put on a show for sure but my problem with it is I wanted to see Jay Cargill come out and be like a dominant force not another 
click, not another tag, you know, like I wanted her to be the one who's going to fight someone like Charlotte Flair or Rhea Ripley, right? Um, not a bad introduction, just not what I was expecting out of her. I wanted it to be more of a spectacle. At the end of the day, uh, Bianca, Naomi, and um, <clears throat> Jade won, and good for them. I just don't want them to get lost in the sauce and become like the female version of the New Day, right? So great show, great great vibes. You know, Jade Cargill did do her job. She killed it. She looked amazing in the ring, as did everybody else. All right, now here we go. We got the ring general, Sammy and Gunther. The ring general, Gunther, uh, is just, he's bad, dude. He's bad to the bone. I don't think we've ever had an intercontinental champion as good. Um, and to be straightforward with you guys, I'm like the biggest fan of Sami Zayn. I think he is the most underrated superstar that the WWE has right now. Of course, you know, I'm not behind the scenes. I don't know all the back, back screen stuff and all that stuff, but... I mean, to put it into my perspective, the New Day, big group, right? Cool. Um, DX, big group, cool. You know, NWO, big group, cool, right? Well, how long had the bloodline been around being pushed that nobody was happy, everybody was sad, and then boom, out of nowhere, they throw Sami Zayn into the mix, and he is not only funny, but he's passionate, and he's an amazing athlete. I truly believe that... Um, his contribution to the bloodline made it what it is today and they would not be anywhere where they are at right now if it wasn't for that gentleman right there becoming an honorary use and making that whole group of guys stick out, right? So what am I really trying to say is Sami Zayn definitely deserves to win this Intercontinental Championship. Um, I think it's like the third or fourth time he's already won it. I'd like to see this man win the WWE Championship, even if it's just, you know, short term. He definitely deserves it. He goes out and he puts on a good show and um, he does a great job, right? Obviously, everyone deserves to be champ at some point. Maybe, maybe not. But if if anyone does, it's him. And he he's a great storyteller. He's good on the camera and his ability in the ring is clean and awesome. And I'm very happy for Sami Zayn. Unfortunate for Gunther, but maybe he'll be able to rest a little bit, come back, and I'd like to see him go for something bigger than that Intercontinental Championship. I don't think he needs his his title back. I think he needs a bit a bigger and better one. So maybe he'll start going for that WWE Championship or the Universal Championship. But at the end of the day, let's go Sammy, baby. Cool. So at the end of that match, we had one more match for the night. And that's The Rock, and that's The Rock and Roman versus Cody and Seth, right? So here we are. It's a great match, man. Everybody's fighting. There's a lot of good things that happen. There's a lot of bad things that happen. But all in all, I'm going to say The Rock looked pretty great. Um, he was in great shape. I mean, he doesn't move exactly the same way he used to, but he's just way more powerful. So um, I feel like his uh, add-on of muscle definitely compensated for his young agility not that he wasn't agile tonight i mean he was just a force to be reckoned with and roman reigns looked great he looked super fit he looked awesome um my one discrepancy for this fight is probably the ridiculousness of seth rollins uh outfit right like what was that? It was like, what are we watching? Like a fashion show or a wrestling match, right? And I get it. I know HBK was glamorous and this or that, but at least it was not overdone. I didn't know what I was looking at. Like, and that's my whole problem with Seth freaking Rollins lately, right? He's so into this character that he, I, I feel like he's been a false champion. Yeah, he got his work. He worked every single night and he fought and he fought, but... I think really all he's got going on for him right now is his theme song because people can sing along with it. Oh, oh whatever it is, right? Simple. Um, And that's about it, right? Like, I think that's really what got him over was his theme song. I don't think it was his skills on the mic. I don't think it was his storytelling. I really just pretty much feel it's his theme song. Um, But... Nonetheless, I know he's a, he is an incredible athlete, um, but what he did on night two, 
that's what I can appreciate. As far as Cody, man, his in-ring entrance was cool. Um, everything was nice. Everybody fought pretty well. It was a great match. It lasted a long time. Um, at the end of the day, um, Seth and Cody ended up losing. And it became bloodline rules. We had Solo Sokoa interrupt. We had Jey Uso interrupt. You know. Oh no, hold on. I'm confusing matches. Let's let's back up a track, right? Anyways, these guys win. Um The Rock and Roman Reigns, they win. And then the next night, spoiler alert, right? I'm sure you guys already see, but we'll wait till the end of the video. But that was that was the end of night one. We end up with bloodline rules right here. And these guys take the, the the L, right? Which has everybody concerned for both of their matches the next day because Seth Rollins got to fight Drew, right? Which Seth Rollins took a beating. Like, he got beat up, right? So let's fast forward to the next day, night number two. And we got Drew McIntyre versus Seth freaking Rollins, right? And I don't know what Seth Rollins was thinking, but he came in dressed like... A cowboy slash Chinese Aztec thing. So The Rock's kind of right. He's kind of like a walking emoji, dude. I don't know who he is, what he is, what his views are. I'm not sure about Seth Rollins at all. But I do know that Drew McIntyre, his character has been lean. He's been tough. He's been angry. He's been frustrated. And he's been precise. Like his in-ring ability is up there. I would really hate that for the WWE to lose Drew McIntyre because he's been so great lately. Um, and there's rumors. There's you know, always rumors, right? But I think he's going to hopefully re-sign and get that title back um, because he did end up winning Seth Rollins for the champion. So congratulations to Drew McIntyre for being a world heavyweight champion again. But here's the thing. Um, he got in a little bout with CM Punk on the side, right? And, you know, like, most people were like, what's Punk even doing getting involved? But this was all Drew's doing. He was over there showboating and talking smack. And then CM Punk just let him have it, you know. So, you know, let the bully pick on you and then he's going to get punched, right? Well, after he got punched, Senor Money in the Bank showed up. And he was like, nah, bro, I'm going to cash this in on the biggest WrestleMania of all time. And I'm going to get my day in the sun. And guess what? He did. He got that. He won. He won the championship. We got Damian Priest as the WWE champion. So congratulations, Damian. You pulled it off. You waited a long time. You were precise. And um, honestly, I can't say you don't deserve it because you're a badass. But um, it's not a true win, you know. So let's see what you do with it. Let's see how he goes, right? Um, Damian's pretty, pretty powerful. He's pretty quick. I think he's one of the best in-ring performers WWE has right now. So I'm glad he has the title, right? Here's a match that I don't even feel was deserving of being on WrestleMania. I'm not sure how it got there. Um, honestly, because both, both of these guys are like limbo groups, right? Um, I'm not fond of any of them. I don't even... I mean, like, I know... Lashley, I know the Prophets, I know Cross, but who are the other guys? Are they like up from NXT or whatever? Like they're 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 getting pulled up to the main roster and they're getting a WrestleMania match when there's plenty of other tag teams that could have been there. I mean I mean, what the heck? I mean like there's so many others. You have um the Yes Boys, right? You have Otis, right? That dude deserves it, right? These are all people people like. Nobody likes Karrion Cross. Um I mean, they like his lady, I guess, but like he has no story. Lost Lashley, like all he is 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 a Brock Lesnar copycat, right? Like there's no stories, right? It's just <sighs> I feel like WrestleMania needs to have something great all the time. And I give this match a D and I don't think it should have even been part of the the main roster right like it should have been like a pre-show match I mean the pre-show matches were better than this to be honest with you um I think this was a fail on all of WWE's part like they need to do something with these guys separately they need to separate Lashley from the Profits they need to do something right like I would have much rather seen like Ricochet versus 
um, somebody else, right? Like like one on one with with Bobby Lashley or one on one with Montez, right? Ford, that would have been way better. Bad match. And then here's this match, and I think it was trash. Also, um, neither one of these performers are trash. Well, I mean, I get like L.A. Knight has catchphrases where he's like, "Yeah, right." But is he anything more than a walking marketing person himself? Like, yeah, he's 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 good, but I mean, this is AJ Styles, dude, and AJ Styles is giving this gentleman a push for what? For what? LA Knight is nowhere where he needs to be to get this kind of push. Like, honestly, like AJ Styles is one of the best wrestlers, if not the best wrestler in the WWE right now. Um, <clears throat> and he's pushing LA Knight. And I get LA Knight is good, but let this gentleman like work on getting tag titles. Let this gentleman work on getting intercontinental titles, not beating AJ Styles. AJ Styles deserves to be in the shine, right? He deserves that. Like anytime this guy goes out, he puts his body and his life on risk and he puts on a great show. Um, I'm tired of angry, angry AJ Styles. I mean, I am. I like. I want the phenomenal one back. I want uh, matches like with him and Shinsky to come back. And they're they're putting these guys on the back burner um, for people like Solo Sokoa. Like that dude. He's only there because of Roman, right? Like nobody's like, oh, I want to watch the Solo match. No, right? But an AJ match, they want to they want to watch. You know, like. But this was just. I give this a C plus, you know, like it was a good match because they're both badasses, but I don't think everyone was invested. They did their best to make like the cinematic fight and all this, but it didn't even feel real. Like they're both semi good guys fighting each other for no reason, for no titles. It was just not, not well done. Now this was a good match. Uh Bailey and Io Sky, right? Um the story was good, everything was up to it, the betrayal on Bailey, the fact that she made them who they are. Um she helped Io even get that title and um Bailey was an excellent heel. She was an excellent heel. Now she looks like she's going to be a face, right? And her face is okay, like her face character, I mean not talking about her physical face, but her face character is pretty good. But her heel, she gets into it, right? And this face character, it's always like this courageous girl, right? I want her to have some kind of really good character. But congratulations to her. She put on a great match. And she definitely deserves to wear that title again. Um, and Io Sky, man, she put on a phenomenal fight. Um, she fought every pay-per-view. Um, of, of course, you know, she was same old story like Roman Reigns always getting damage controls help right but this time it was a clean fight and I'm like dang that was a fair fight and EO lost and so that was that was cool man and EO Sky definitely killed it out of all of the Kabuki Warriors and her I think um, I enjoy watching her matches the most because um, her in-ring performance is just sick but congratulations to Bailey and then finally we got Cody versus Roman Reigns with Cody coming out on top baby he won the championship it was a great match um it was long it was hard there was a couple things I didn't really like but at the end of the day the ovation he got for winning just made everything really great like the tattoo on his chest says it all right dream because like look where he's at dude this kind of makes me come back to it like back in the day when Shawn michaels won his first title you know like the boyhood dream now look at him he he completed his story for his family and i hope that um his brother and his mom and his sisters and his wife and his kids and everybody who had to endure all that length of time before he his family got this really is proud of him because he did a great job um but let's talk about the match right so roman reigns did incredible he looked he looked great he looked agile he looked in shape um he was funny in the match there was at a point in time where uh roman reigns uh did the crossroads to cody and it didn't take cody out so he was saying this that move sucks that move sucks right and he's making fun of cody's move right but uh, at the end of the day, um, it was pretty cool because John Cena came out, right, to help. 
and nobody expected that i didn't expect john cena to come out and i'm glad he did because um it's kind of like a passing of the torch right like john cena is with the people's like the real the, the current people's champion like the biggest star and cody rhodes could definitely be that if he holds on to this title um what i didn't get was why the undertaker showed up i mean cool we're glad the undertaker showed up but if he's not going to be involved in any more stories or be in the in the ring i don't think he had a reason to be there they could have done it with just john cena right um and then the rock came out and uh he took care of Cena, and then that's when The Undertaker took care of The Rock, and then Cody was able to take the win. Not before, though, Jimmy and, and, and Solo interrupted the match, right? So that's kind of where it was. For, for once, we actually heard Solo boss other people around, which was kind of cool, which could lead into some frustration where he's going to end up uh, quitting or going with somebody else, right? Um, at this point, I feel like Roman Reigns is going to get a, a big break. Not that he doesn't always get big breaks, but I think he's going to get a big break. And the bloodline is going to have to find its find its own way uh, without him. Or The Rock might take over. I don't know. But that was WrestleMania 40, guys. Thanks for chilling out with me and listening to that. Again, my name is Joey, uh, a.k.a. Two Fly Perez on my gaming channel, IntelliBit. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Um, turn on notifications. And give this video a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Have a blessed rest of the day. Peace.